live on Facebook. It is Monday and it's my favorite time of the week. So here we are joining and it's confession day. (laughs) I'm Jen. I'm Jamie. And I've been married almost 23 years. We'll be married 17 years in November. I have nagged and complained my husband at times so far into becoming a man that I no longer wanted to be married to. Yeah. If we're going with the confession, I would say I told Jen earlier that I feel like I have treated Eric like a dog and not that you should do this to your dog, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> either. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bad pet owner too. I don't do this to my pet, um, but rub his face in his own stuff, you know, um, and kind of remind him of the crap. Um, I've done that. So welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm sure you guys are so excited that you joined us talking about this icky stuff, but it's actually really something that we want to talk to you guys about. And I have a feeling you have quite a bit of opinions about it as well. So I'm Jen, that's Jamie, where she's Velvet Steel. We came together. Oh gosh, I was actually looking through some old pictures. It was about a year ago when this we started really talking plans um, to get this business going and to get this um, idea, this vision of um, what if we were to talk to the women of who we were 10 years ago? And instead of allowing them to make all the mistakes that we've made, we met them on that journey and we said, hey, could we show you possibly some ways to avoid some traps, avoid some ways, some roadblocks that are eliminating you are eliminating. um, Well, let me go backwards. Some to eliminate some of those roadblocks that are really in the way of letting you live free to live loved. And really the biggest is to pursue your purpose with a passion. So that's she's velvet seal. And that's us. And we love coffee talks because we like to talk about the hard stuff. We like to talk about the stuff that nobody really talks about. Um, So Jamie, tell us a little bit about what's on our plans today. And actually, while you're talking, I'm going to share it. And if you guys um, would take a moment real quick to share the video as well, um, because you're going to want some friends on this because we need some interaction today. Um, In fact, here's your first, first assignment. One, share it. Second, how long have you been a naggy wife? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. And if That's you've right. never nagged your husband, if you've never nagged, not, not one moment of nagging your husband, inbox me and show me, show me how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> this was confessional, right? So we did prep everybody for that, right? It's about get, getting into it today. Right. Uh, so we, we kind of made a shift last week and leading into that week in terms of what we're going to be talking about. And we said that we are going to be hitting on your influence, our influence uh, as women, as in positional influence, but then also just in who we are and in the relationships that we have. So why not start right in our house, right in our home, the, the influence that we have with the people we live with. Let's start with the husband, right? So <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel like nagging has um, maybe not been the best strategy (laughs) for my influence. (laughs) I did try early on in our relationship. Um, This is when, so I got to tell you this, Eric and I met when I was 14. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, (laughs) I'm, let me say I am praying. I am very different than when he met me. (laughs) Um, But so we dated for a while. We broke up when I went to college, we got back together. Okay. So in that second relationship, we were getting, we were getting serious. Like I wasn't into doing the second relationship unless it was going to be that way. And, um, I remember getting into a, an argument. I don't, of course, I don't ever remember what they're about right. you know, like at that point. There's something stupid, I'm sure. Um, and I remember it clearly because this was the first time I was ever called out <laughs> on this. Thank you, Eric. Um, was, we were sitting on my parents' couch and I was telling him something or doing something. And it was probably trying to pluck at his emotions and dig like a, right. you know, a knife in there and try and get him to be emotional or change yeah. his opinion or changes his, his decision. 
Like, yeah. I don't care what emotion comes out. I just want to see an emotion. Just show me something. <laughs> right. And so uh, anyway, I remember doing this and he goes in a very calm voice. He goes, Jamie, I will not be manipulated. And I'm like, oh, is that what you call that? <laughs> is that what I'm doing? Um, it was just so natural for me. Um, I You're think like, my, whole, my whole world is shattered <laughs> like that. <laughs> what? That's like my strategy. <laughs> uh, if you are a younger sibling, um, I'd like to know like your placement um, in your like sibling line. I was a, the young little sister who okay. had a brother. Um, and I felt like the, the volume of my voice and my ability to manipulate was like survival tactics. <laughs> I think little girls learn how to manipulate early with their dads and, right, um, right. you know, all those things. But um, when it comes to our relationship with our husband, um, man, that can come out all together too naturally. And um, that is not the way that we want to influence our husband. I don't know about you, but there have been times I've shifted his opinion and his decision and right. regretted that I ever did. <laughs> because he right. has bitterness and resentment yeah. because I'm doing it for you kind of a right, thing. Right. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, well, I definitely, I married a man. I had just turned 19 and he was so quiet and he was so mysterious and so strong. And like, he was wrapped up in this, like, who are you? You know, you never talk and you're so like, your composure is so held together and it was just so mysterious and mysteriousness is attractive. Right. So, and then he gave me snippets that only I could see. And I loved that. I love that nobody else in the world could see these little snippets of him um, when he opened his heart up and stuff. Then we got married again. You know, this, this November, I think it's, uh, what is 93 is when we started dating. So this November, whatever 24. that is. Oh, we've been together 24 years in November. Oh. So we got married and I kid you not, it did not take longer than a month after those I do, I do's and the honeymoon where I was like, he never talks. Like, he never <laughs> says anything like, why don't you talk? And I remember laying in bed and just like wanting him to talk. And I would poke and prod and poke. And like, at this point, I didn't care what he said or what kind of emotion he had. I just wanted something. So I would nag and nag and nag until I could get something out of him. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's, pretty constructive. It was pretty healthy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that that helped out in lots of ways. What about the, so we always make the joke and there's that word, the, or you know, the phrase, the honeydew list, right? I don't know about you, but I love lists. Like if you were sitting at my desk right now, I've got a I know list you do. to the side of me. <laughs> I've got my list for the day that I'm ready to tackle. As soon as we're done with coffee talk, I love, I, I love having the organization lists, right? Right. Um, I love to think ahead, plan ahead and, and then create my, you know, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. Right. right. Um, that is not my husband's mode of operation. <laughs> and so anyway, I, I do a stellar honeydew list. And just so you know, I can make them super cute. Um, <laughs> not that that's effective. I've found having um, four boys, they could care less about how cute and efficient my lists are. Um, but not just like, what can you get done today? I think I kind of made a mental honeydew list and, and maybe, maybe a honeybee list. Um, like I want you to be this today and yep. I want you to do this today. So anybody relate to that? Like hearts yeah. and likes, if you're like, oh yeah, I have a honeybee list and I have a yep. honeydew list. Put a and little comment, put a little, a bee emoji. If yeah. you have maybe not intentionally set out that way but you have morphed yourself into creating even unsaid honey bee lists. Mm -hmm. In other words, these are things that we would really like you to be mm -hmm. just in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those unsaid expectations are felt. Yeah. And as quiet as some of our husbands are and as sweet as some of them are, they do feel um, everything we're putting out. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in that same direction where it was like, okay, I want you, you know, we need the lawn mode, but yet I need you to spend more time with me. And, um, you're really good at cooking. So why don't you get on dinner? And, um, I hate laundry. So maybe the laundry could be done too. And, <laughs> but yet then the garage doors broke. And so I need you to work more to make some more money. So we can pay for that garage door. 
but yet yeah. you never tell me how pretty I am. And, you know, really leaving Andy and nagging him and complaining him into this guy that's just so frustrated. He doesn't know what I want half the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and setting him into a position where I have no influence on him and raising four boys right now, like Jamie, um, my little girl's a whole nother story. She's starting to talk and won't be quiet. But <laughs> raising four boys, I'm seeing it in them as well of, you know, are we able to influence the men in our life? Really today, we're talking about our husbands. Are we able to influence the men in our life if all we're doing is picking? Mm -hmm. um, no, if you needed an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys weren't following or tracking, no, um, you know, and it's funny because I think I struggled with how to be an influencer because don't, don't you agree that you probably married somebody who is opposite of you in, in a lot Absolutely. of ways. Um, and I think that that's really, really, really good. It's beautiful. Think, oh, if I had married somebody like me and I've, I've often said that, yeah. that, um, it would have to be a special version of me for us to be really good friends. I think Jen, you're kind of a special version of me. Um, mm. You're a better version of me. We I wouldn't marry you though. I don't think. No, <laughs> no, huh? no, we would drive each other crazy. Um, but, but I think the idea of um, I need somebody who can be spontaneous. I need somebody right. who can go with the flow. Um, and I need somebody that maybe can be really present in the moment. Um, because I spend a lot of time in my future, um, and in our future. And so right. we balance each other out and I, and, and so for him to pull him over to the dark side, and no, I wouldn't say that my, my side is the dark side, but sometimes I feel like I want him to be like me. I want him right. to function like me. And you and I have talked about like, Oh, well, please, every, everything we like do me. is efficient. <laughs> I mean, our way is always the right way. Let's just face right. it. I mean, let's just, right. let's Let's just face it. Like the way we do everything is the right way. So do you guys redo stuff? Like if you ask your husband to do something, do you redo it? Like if you ask him to, Hey, could you put the laundry away, but he doesn't do the socks right. Or the shirts, right. Do you redo it? I, uh, that, that to post, me, post a t-shirt emoji. If you've yeah. ever redone the laundry, refolded it, redried it, rewashed the whole cycle. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so we, <laughs> we don't let him be him, you know, we don't have the grace and the space for him to, to grow into who God's made him to be, right. um, because of our honeybee lists. Um, I think, I think that comes from a couple of different things you and I have talked about, but, right. um, sometimes I think we are expecting him to be something that only God is supposed to be in our life. Absolutely. Um, we're asking him to fill some gaps in our heart or, or take care of some needs that he was never intended to take care of. Um, yeah. I, I think back to the times when um, financially we were, um, we were just drowning. And, right. it, and, and so there was a lot to that story and we'll save that for another day, but we were drowning. And I'm sure some of you have related to that or you do relate to that now financially speaking. Um, but I think about what I wanted him to be for me in that moment. And then I think about what I actually needed in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, yes, I needed him to, to be who he was meant to be. And I needed him to be my helpmate, but I was asking him to be so much more. I had fear and anxiety running through my veins. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's what you feel when you're drowning because you're gasping for air and you're like, get me to the surface. Right. right. And so I was asking him to be my rescuer. Right. I was wanting him to be the, the fixer, the savior. And, and he was never meant to be my rescuer and savior. Uh, so sometimes our husbands uh, are, we are asking them to be something they are not supposed to be for right. us. Right. Well, and I think one of, I always call it like that, that day of disgust when you realize something really needs to change and your tactics aren't working. And, you know, I, I remember just watching my husband um, recover from surgery and we were just, we were both in a hospital room and I was just watching him. And I remember thinking of all the lists that I've kept of things he's done wrong, you know, mental lists. I don't do it necessarily on purpose, but they're there of all the things he's done wrong and all the ways I could have 
And I'll just be real with you guys. I could have easily justified divorce. Okay. And, and walk, talked, talked myself into it at some point in the 23 years. But as I saw him laying there recovering in the hospital, I realized I need to start looking in the mirror and figure out how I can be a better wife, Mm -hmm. regardless of what kind of husband comes out of this hospital. Mm -hmm. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to not change him and morph him into what I feel like he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, My job is to look in the mirror and ask God to change me Mm -hmm. into being the best wife for Andy, Mm -hmm. not try to change Andy into the best husband of what I think I need. Mm -hmm. Lord knows that would be a mess, (laughs) but just really that conviction of how can I influence him? How can I love him for exactly who he is? The way God made him quiet, kooky. He makes jokes sometimes that I, I have a one girlfriend, Heather, who just, he thinks she, thank goodness for her. She thinks his jokes are so funny. Um, and they are funny, but a lot of times that you just like, oh, you know, the dry sense of humor. It's, I love it now. It's so beautiful. I may not laugh all the time, but it's so kooky. It's so him. So I took a list. Well, first, let me read you this um, quote by Levi Lesko. There is no way you can be right with your mate until you're right with your maker. Mm-hmm. And I was pretty convicted on all of the things if Andy were to make a list of all the things I've done wrong, and if he were to make a list of all of the woman wife that I am not to him, Mm -hmm. um, how would I come out? How would I fare in that? Not very good. So my responsibility, I'll never forget that day of just, I want to get to know who he is. I want to lift up the strengths of that God has given him and embrace the man that he is, that's my responsibility mm-hmm. is to love him for him mm-hmm. and, um, and just be the way Jesus loves me and the unconditional grace that I get from Jesus and the forgiveness and the mercy. If he does that for me, who am I to not pass that on to Andy? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's focusing on the, uh, the Jamie B list on uh, <laughs> who am I becoming, you know? Um, I, so I asked my husband when I knew we were coming into this conversation, I said, so <clears throat> how do wives best influence their husband in your opinion? <clears throat> and so he said to me, you know, and of course I could kind of come up with in my mind what I think he would say. Um, and I'm sure if you have been hanging with us for a while, you kind of understand a little bit of my personality. Um, and I'm pretty intentional in a, in a lot of things, like I said, planning and moving forward. And, and I'm a personal trainer was my portion, big portion of my career. And so, um, a lot of people would say, Oh, it must be nice to live with a trainer. Um, I have not influenced him much in that way. I don't <laughs> nag him or ask him or, um, force him to do anything when it comes to eating. Um, or how he eats. Um, So I I was honestly curious to know, because sometimes I don't feel like my actions are of much influence, but he, he hit on exactly what Jen just was hinting at is what has been most influential to him is watching me behind closed doors. um, What nobody else sees on, on Facebook or not even my friends or people that don't live with me, watching me go to Jesus and go, you know, number one, just worship who he is and have gratitude for, for him in my life and who he is. And then saying, make me the girl you want me to be, you know, and, and asking him to work in me so he can work through me. And, um, anyway, that's what my husband said as being in his opinion, the most influential, uh, way that a woman can influence her husband, um, is for her to, to ask God to help her to be the girl she was meant to be. So we got to work on our Jamie and Jen B lists lists. <laughs> and it's long and, and it's exciting too, because mm-hmm. I don't want to be the girl that I feel like I'm set out to be. I want to be the woman that God has set out, like the purpose that he has set out for me. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, you know, having boys 
words. Let's talk about words. So we have the, the first idea of how do we get through to really influencing our husbands and, and, and in a healthy way, you know, how can we influence our husbands? Cause you guys are influencers. We talked about that. If you've missed, we're building up in these coffee talks. So if you've missed some of the other coffee talks, listen to them because we've laid out how you, you are an influencer, no matter. It's not like we said, it's not a personality type. It's not outgoing introverted. Um, I live in a big city. I live on a farm. Like it, none of that matters. You are an influencer. You've been designed to be loved, to belong to a certain, you know, group. And just, um, that's, that's what God has brought us here for. Mm-hmm. So now we're diving into the different groups of, of who we can influence. And today is our husband. Um, and we talked a little bit about our nagging and a little confession with our nagging. Um, but really words. So we talked about, um, who we are in private, right? God calling us to and holding us out for standards of who we are, regardless of what our husband's doing, regardless, you know, sometimes they say, Oh, it's a contract. When you get married, you know, I'm doing my part, but they're not doing their part. Um, we've been called as women of God to hold up our part and disclaimer, obviously, if you're in an abusive relationship or anything that's, um, illegal or unethical or anything like that, um, that's not who we're speaking to right now. But if you are in that relationship, you're, you are called to hold up to your portion, regardless of what you feel like he's holding up to. That is our call. Mm -hmm. But this whole idea then of words, words are so powerful. And I was telling Jamie that I would, I took my, um, he's 11 now, but I took my eight-year-old out on a date And, uh, we were sitting there and, you know, we're in the car ride and I'm not huge on silence. I'm getting better at it, but, you know, kind of just sitting there and I'm asking him, so how's school going? What's your favorite thing? And what's your favorite sport? And what's your favorite? And we get to dinner and we sit down and he looks at me and he goes, mommy, can you just talk less now? Can you just stop talking? (laughs) And I just thought, you know what? Absolutely. And I bet this is what your daddy has thought on every single date we've gone on. And he just has never said it. (laughs) Uh, uh, We're talking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, there's that. I've, I've heard it so many different times that guys in a day use up like, I I don't remember the exact numbers, but I want to say it was like 12,000 to 20,000 words in their day. Right. Right. Women were like four times that amount. It was like 150,000 to 200,000 words in our day. Um, So if we already know that we are verbal and maybe they aren't as verbal, um, you were hitting on and hinting toward the idea of being intentional with our words toward our husband. Because I'm thinking not only does he have a capacity to speak so many words, he probably only he has a capacity that's more limited than us to hear, <laughs> to right. listen to. So if we were you know, strictly focused on, gosh, how can I be uh, an influence in my marriage? Obviously, you talked about who we're becoming. And then with our words, if we were to choose our words to, to build up and not tear down. I was telling Jen, that's our memory verse of the week because my boys potty talk is like super normal, but I've got (laughs) who is now copying and mimicking everything his 11 year old brother and 15 year old brother are saying in public. And it just sounds completely inappropriate and disgusting. Um, so So do do I dare ask everybody to drop a little chocolate ice cream emoji if they have sons that <laughs> use potty talk <laughs> oh my gosh and and it's gosh I feel like we we are creative us beasons that's part of our like you know family mission statement we are creative and um we're creative with our language too so we are our, <laughs> our memory verses words are like honey they make people happy and healthy that's the international children's bible version because I need that sometimes um and the kids do so anyway I'm like, those words don't taste like honey right now. That's like, <laughs> yuck, you know, but anyway, when we're thinking about that of our own words being like honey to our husband, what would make them happy and healthy is to, is to call out who we know God has made them to be not in a way of right. you aren't being this person. It's right. catching them in the moment that they're, they're in a headspace or maybe in a heart place that isn't in line with who we know they are. Could our words then be like honey to them 
you know, to, to call that out. And we talk about speaking life or you hear that, you know, that phrase used, but um, when we think about our influence, uh, we know words are powerful and we got a lot of them. Right. So is there, is there the challenge in us then as wives to choose the words we're going to use and choose the timing timing's big. Um, and then to be very intentional about speaking right to their soul, you know, like not just in their ears, like speak to who they are. Jen, Jen, you have a good story about that. You were just telling me this morning about, or example Uh, of that. Yeah. And this was the first time, like I said, 23 years of marriage, 23 years, 22 and a half, something like that. Um, that I really, I was, I felt like it was such a gift from God that he had given me at the time. So we were in, I call it intense fellowship. You know, those conversations you have in marriage where things are getting a little bit, little bit like, well, why'd you look at me that way? Or what'd you, what'd you mean by saying it that way? You know, we're kind of in one of those things. And, um, and it was an, it was a time that I had actually, and here it goes with that first thing we talked about is getting right with God right? We got to get right with God and we got to look in the mirror. And I, that day, I know I can tie it back to, I had spent a lot of time focusing on God and a lot of time, just like, just me, you know, like change me. (laughs) Don't let me focus on anybody else, but just change me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so with this conversation began and I recognized it immediately that the words that were coming out of Andy's mouth, they were not truth. They were lies that he was believing. And I recognized that for what it was Mm -hmm. and I didn't get mad about it. It was, um, you know, bringing up some old history that we both had been healed from and we were over it. Mm -hmm. And ironically enough, it was history that I could have used to just, you know, Mm -hmm. stab right back at him. And, but I recognize almost like taking a step back, like looking at the whole bigger picture of this conversation and our marriage and that, that idea of fighting for your marriage. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, this is not who you are. Mm -hmm. This is not truth. These are lies that you have taken and you have taken the bait. Basically you've taken the bait and I'm not going to let you go down this road because you're so much better than that. And we have come too far in our marriage to even go backwards. Mm -hmm. So hard pass on what you're saying right now, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but not in the sense of like, but it, it was, it was the first time I will say the first time in 23 years where I was able to say, I love you so much. And the words that are coming out of your mouth right now are not truth. And together we're not going to go backwards. We're going to recognize that together. We're tired. We're hungry. There's been some stress and let's see this for what it is. Mm -hmm. And being that woman that she's velvet steel woman, the woman that is bold enough to stand up, you know, I think of Esther and how she used her influence. Um, it wasn't manipulation. It wasn't, um, nagging. It wasn't complaining. It was, this is the truth. And I have been brought here for such a time as this. And we, as women have got to take that bigger picture and account and say, no way. We are not going backwards. This fight that we're feeling is not between us right now. Mm -hmm. And I know that (laughs) I love you so much. Mm -hmm. We've made way too much headway to even, I'm not taking that bait with you. And not only am I not going to, before I would have said, I'm not taking that bait with you. You go ahead, you go, (laughs) you go down that path. I'll watch you destruct. And, but I added, I'm not taking that bait with you and I'm not letting you take it either. You know, when you're saying that it, it brings back to the power of vulnerability. Um, because oh, absolutely. Was vulnerable in that yeah. moment, super absolutely. vulnerable. And when they are vulnerable, we get tempted to feel very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So our response to feeling vulnerable can be like, you know, like stand up and get offended or feel rejected or get angry at them, you know, and, um, right. and kind of, like you said, it builds this tension when we're both feeling vulnerable, we can right. be kind of in that both take that posture, but right. instead you had the courage in your own vulnerability to choose to believe in him. And I think, you know, yeah. you use the words mutual vulnerability at one point when we were talking about that in, in the marriage relationship, right? That when he is weak, yes, that puts us in a vulnerable place too. When he's made mistakes, when he's hurting, when, right. when he is admitting it. Cause in the email that I wrote this weekend, it takes a lot of courage for a guy to admit right. that he feels like he's failing or that he feels like he's vulnerable. It takes a lot. 
So if we can have the courage and be operating by, by the power of the Holy Spirit to come into that relationship with a posture of I'm vulnerable too, but I'm trusting God to, to take care of my vulnerabilities. Um, I'm coming into then this mutual vulnerability of like, hey, we're together in this and I believe in you. I think our husbands, they need someone to believe in God in them, you Absolutely. know, and believe in who he's made them to be and, and to call that out of them. Um, that's, that's where team happens. I know I need that for my husband. I need him to, he, he's my biggest supporter, fan and cheerleader. Um, and, and I need that, but he needs it too, even though he doesn't verbalize it or we don't get to hear about their vulnerabilities as often he needs that too. And so we, we have the opportunity to, to love them into, into leadership. We have the ability to love them into the man that they've been called to be. We we have the opportunity to love them into the dads. There's, they're supposed to be right in the middle of vulnerability. I think that's, that's the power that we talked about the power of vulnerability right in the middle of those moments. It's good and and awesome to have date night and you're feeling all lovey and tell them how much you love Mm -hmm. them. That's good too. Um, but how much more powerful in the moment of weakness, how much more powerful in the moment of vulnerability, Um, I feel like you are doing so much more. You're like planting seeds that are invisible when you do that, right? Like you can spray on the perfume and cologne all on the outside, you know, and have the visible stuff when it's easy. But when you're doing it in that place, oh man, you're, there's some stuff being planted that's going to produce a fruit that is, um, that is uncomparable or incomparable, um, So, yeah, I mean, that to me and and somebody mentioned on here, which I was going to bring up, Mary said when she stopped nagging and started praying is when she began to see transformation in her husband. Biggest thing for her is returning to her first love and Jesus for all of her needs. Um, hundred percent. I read power of the praying wife when I was nursing one of my babies sitting in the middle of the night up and, um, and I can say, you know, and stormy Omardian, I believe is how you would pronounce the last name, but she um, her, her testimony with her husband was praying for things that she had started nagging, but wasn't seeing the change. Um, and so she just committed it to prayer and she saw the difference of allowing him to get to that place on his own, you know, or like God whispering in his ear. And, um, so she definitely saw the power of, of prayer in influencing her husband. And I totally agree with that, Mary. Um, when there's something big, that you'd like to be like, oh my gosh, you're missing it. <laughs> right, right. I think that there might be a few times that guy would say, go and be his helpmate, you know, maybe right. bring this to his attention in a very loving and gracious way. There's times for that. I right. would never do it had I not taken it to Jesus over and over and yep. over and asking him to remove my offense and my protection of myself. Right. Um, but so there's a time and place for that. But right. I think prayer is always, <laughs> always. Always, oh. always, always. And yeah. more time is up. And really, Mary, I love that comment because that really is where we want to close up on is um, really making sure that our eyes are focused on God and in prayer, because really prayer aligns us with God's mind. It really aligns us with what God's vision is for us mm-hmm. and for our marriage. So, um, so yeah, next week we are going to be talking about influencing as parents, which, Hey, I think it's so great. I've had this little, this little baby running around me. So that's a great segue into next week is how can I influence those beautiful minds? Right. Um, but yeah, keep, let's keep the continuation, the conversation continuing. I love these coffee talks throughout the week as we're continually unwrapping um, the content. Cause it's just not enough. I mean, this is already gone way over, but it's still not enough. You could see how we could keep talking about this forever. Yeah. So, um, thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you next week on our coffee talk. When we talk about influencing, um, in our parenting, in our home still. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Amy. All right, you guys. Bye. Bye.